This story is called The Leprechaun and the Purple Snurd by Michael Palma. This story takes place in Greenland, a magical land where child-sized leprechauns live. Greenland has many animals like green frogs, alligators, <coughs> turtles, and birds. There's lots of trees and hills of green grass. Between the hills and trees, you can see a gigantic, humongous, huge, ginormous green castle. All the leprechauns live there. In the middle of the castle, there's a garden that has a pot of gold with different colors. The gold is guarded by a leprechaun. His name is Dooney. Dooney guards the gold from the snurd, the purple monster. Snurd lives in the basement of the castle. Every day, Snurd tries to get the gold, but he never can. One day, Snurd met Dooney and they became friends. They played every day to see who was better. One day, while playing basketball, they decided to have a contest. Whoever scored the most points could take the pot of gold. The basketball game was a tie. Snurd was happy, but Dooney was sad. Snurd looked at his new friend and decided to share the pot of gold. The end. This is called I Wanna an Iguana. Hi, my name is Freddie, and this is my pet iguana, Spike. Are you an iguana lover? If you answered yes and you don't have one, I'll show you a way to get one. I told my mom an iguana would make a great pet, but my mom said no, an iguana would make would not make a good pet. They need a good habitat and they lay 20 to 70 eggs. So I thought to myself, a dinosaur would make a good pet. I told my mom and she laughed, ha ha ha, and said, sure, go find a dinosaur. I found a dinosaur inside the drugstore. He was purchasing a pair of glasses. I asked if he wanted to come home with me. But he said no. I told him he could sleep in my bed. But still he said no. So I told him I would let him play with my toys. And finally, he said yes. When I brought him home, he jumped on the sofa. Then he went up to my room and played with all my toys. But he didn't put them back. My mom told him to leave, but he said no. So I told my mom, dinosaurs are afraid of iguanas. When the dinosaur heard what I said, he started shaking. So I put a sign on our door that said, Iguana wanted. Then there was a knock on the door. There at the door was an iguana. When the dinosaur saw the iguana, it ran up the stairs, went up into the attic, and flew away. And to this very day, Spike is the best pet yeah. in the world. <laughs> Once, long, long ago, there was a girl that had a sick grandmother. She lived with her grandmother. They had no money to pay for food or a doctor. The girl's name is Crystal. She did not know who her real parents were. But at that time, her grandma was beginning to feel sick. So Crystal stopped asking her grandma about her parents. She wanted her grandma to rest. Crystal went outside and saw a woman selling food. She got an idea of what to do to get money for her grandmother's medicine. Her idea was to sell food. She tried selling vegetables and fruit. But selling vegetables was not getting her money fast because other people were selling the same thing. So Crystal was very sad. The only thing left was selling the roses from her grandmother's garden. She only sold a couple of roses and then she felt sad and started walking home with her head down. As she kept walking, she kept on thinking that she will never collect enough money. But as she looked up, she saw this lady asking for some roses. The lady told her, 
can I have two roses? And she gave them to her. Instead of money, the lady gave her a nice shiny rock. Then Crystal said, no, I can't get a rock because it's not money. The lady said, ooh, it's not just a rock, it's a special wishing rock. Put it in the bottom of your pillow and make a wish. Your wish will come true when you wake up in the morning. So Crystal walked home, thinking if it was true, and also thinking about what she would wish for. Crystal went inside and saw her grandmother sleeping. She washed her teeth and sat in her bed, thinking what wonderful it would be if her wish did come true. She made her wish, put, her, put the rock under the pillow, and fell asleep. Crystal woke up the next morning and saw that she was in a big room. She thought it was a dream. She ran outside and saw her grandmother speaking to two people. She asked her grandmother, who are these two people? They're your parents, she said. She couldn't believe it. Her dream came true, and her grandmother was better. She finally met her parents, and she had a nice place to live in. called My Dog. My dog likes me. My dog is funny. My dog went to the park to play games. My dog is sweet. My dog had babies. My dog runs fast. My dog is nice. I love him. The end. <laughs> this is called Night at the Candy Shop. It was written and it was illustrated by Great Smith. Do you know what happens in a candy store at nighttime? Do you know what, ha what candy does in the dark? Well, I will tell you. Late at night, when the store is closed, there's no, and there's no one in sight, the candy comes alive and plays. The gingerbread men and the lollipops too, they all come out and play. They play, get this, Licorice jump rope and jawbreaker basketball, and of course, I'm saying that. Walk through the haunted gingerbread house. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Gingerbread's man, favorite thing to do is to eat sweet cane sugar and swim in it too. The lollipop's brother's favorite thing is to play gumdrop dodgeball. How fun would that be? Oh, if you could only see all the candy playing and laughing and having so much fun. But by morning, they are done. The candy goes back to their normal displays. The doorknob clicks open and the morning sun shines in. Another day goes by as the candy wait for the night to come. The end. And this is called Noelle Grace Cart. Her favorite color is pink. She is sometimes a bit of a stink. <laughs> she likes to pretend she's a cat. When she goes to the beach, she wears a sun hat. She loves to play with Polly Dolly. She, likes to, she also likes to suck on a lolly. In January, she turned five. When she swims, she likes to take a dive. She sometimes toots at the table. She likes to watch Kim Possible on cable. <laughs> she used to have a little cough. For fun, she turns the lights on and off. She loves to tickle my toes. She also loves to say, no, no, no. The end. Her story is called The Lost Magic Wand. Honey is a bunny who lives by a lake. One day, he got his magic wand, and there appeared to be a cake. Honey loved his magic wand so much that when he had visitors over, he wouldn't let anyone touch. One day, when Honey woke up, the magic wand was missing. He was so mad, he found himself hissing. How did it get lost, he thought to himself. He looked everywhere, even on the shelf. 
some friends went to Honey's house that day, and when he asked if they could help, their response was, okay. They searched and searched and even looked every which way. When his friends finally gave up, they couldn't think of what to say. When Honey's friends left, he called over his neighbor. He said, no, it was too much labor. Honey gave up hope and started to sigh. And after a while, he started to cry. And there in the dark, he heard a bark. And out of the fog, he saw a dog. He bit Honey's pocket, and there was a weird sound. You would be surprised at what he found. His magic wand! It was there all along. He was so happy, he started singing a song. La, 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 la. The end. Let's take a bow. A bumblebee cut down an enormous flower. The glorious hunter imagined that jaguars wrestled him. Wrestled him for the key to unlock his home. Move over, yelled a naughty butterfly. Ouch, that hurts, said the bumblebee. Can you stop, please? Quiet, exclaimed the butterfly. They both ran a different way to stop fighting. The butterfly flew upside down very fast to the bumblebee's home. Wait, I remember you and you and your home. Yes, I remember you too, said the yellow bumblebee. They zoomed off together. That is the end. <laughs> Alex and the Goblin by Maya Stein and Osiris Chagoya. Once upon a time, there was a boy named Alex. Alex was always bored. He played all his games and he read all his books. Every day he searched for a new game. In Alex's closet room, there was a little monster named Goblin with the same problem. Goblin had haunted every house and, and scared everyone in the neighborhood except for Alex. Goblin tried his best to scare Alex, but Alex was too bored to be scared. Life's hard. Who are you? Alex asked, staring at Goblin. I'm Goblin, he replied, staring back at Aunt Alex. Both Alex and Goblin were so excited they made a new friend. Do you want to play baseball? asked Alex, giving Goblin a glove and a hat. What's baseball? asked Goblin. Well, if you don't play baseball, what do you do? Alex asked. I'll show you said Goblin. Goblin took Alex, scaring, whoa, scaring, which is what monsters do for fun. Alex had a great time, but Goblin was bored the entire time. That was awesome, Alex exclaimed. Oh yeah, sure, said Goblin. See, said Goblin, what's baseball? I'll show you, said Alex. Alex took Goblin to play baseball. <coughs> Goblin had the best time of his life, but Alex was bored stiff. That was super! Goblin yelled. Sure, said Alex, yawning. The next day, Goblin was hungry for baseball, but Alex wanted to scare people. They couldn't decide and ended up not talking to each other. Well, I don't need him to play, Goblin muttered. Well, I can scare people by myself, Alex said. Goblin tried to play baseball, but he was a monster. As soon as he arrived with a tree branch for a bat, all the kids ran away. Ah! They screamed as they ran away. Alex tried to scare people, 
But he was just a little boy. Go home, the little kid said to him. So Alex sighed, as Goblin did. <coughs> Alex walked home, and Goblin did too. They bumped into each other at Alex's bedroom door. Hello, said Alex. Hi, said Go Go Goblin. Do you want to play baseball? Alex asked, hoping Goblin would say yes. Mm. I've got a better idea, said Goblin. And Goblin took Alex for Mega Manga Macadamia ice cream <laughs> at Crazy Carl's Ice Cream Shack. And they were happy friends forever after. <laughs> Her story is called The Magic Pond. Once upon a time, there was a little pond that nobody knew was magical until a little girl was walking her dog and got thirsty and drank from the little pond. All of a sudden, the dog turned into a frog. The little girl was surprised. She went to town and everybody made fun of her because she had a frog instead of a dog on her leash. She told everybody about the magical pond. No one believed her, but some people were curious. So they went to the pond and touched it with their fingers, and they all turned into frogs. Soon, almost all the people in town turned into green frogs. One day, the girl went walking with her frog again, and the frog was thirsty and drank from the pond. Something normal happened to the frog. The frog turned normal. The girl told everybody in the town. She told them to touch the pond with their fingers. She also told them that they would turn normal again. The curious people believed her. They all turned normal. The girl said that she never lied. Now everybody in town believed her. Even her parents believed her. They gave the girl an award. She was happy. Now everybody knew that they had to believe the girl. They also celebrated, celebrated Frog Day every year. The end. This is called The Door in the House by Lucia Gardotto. In my house, there is a door. If you open the door, you'll go onto an island. But here, everything will be different. Cats are different. They can be red, blue, or black. Dogs can be different. They can talk. Cows can be different, too. They can walk like people. Everything can be different. Here, teachers are different, too. <laughs> teachers can be blue with three or four eyes. One can be in the back of the head. <laughs> I wonder if this is Mrs. Cedillo here. <laughs> That's great. Great imagination. <laughs> Susanna's story is called The Green Hat. In a little town with lots of green, the day before St. Patrick's Day, lived two dogs named Macy and Chip who were walking down the street. While they were walking down the street, Chip and Macy saw a shiny green hat on a child's head. So then they asked the child where she got it. And she said, a lady under a tree. So Chip and Macy went to the lady under the tree. The lady said, try the Shamrock store. I'm all out. Chip and Macy went to the Shamrock store and asked if they had the green shiny hats. He said, no, but you can try the green store. Chip and Macy were very disappointed, so they decided to head home. Macy and